Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Uh, excuse me if I take a sip during this video. Um, it's only water. I, uh, I have a little bit of a scratchy throat, so I'm going to be doing that probably. So I, I recommend that you get something to drink as well because this is going to be a long video, but it's going to be a good one, okay? This video is intended for folks who have just recently got themselves a dulcimer. Now, uh, I have recognized the need for this out of comments and things of that nature on my videos. Um, but if you've just recently gotten a dulcimer, uh, you've maybe even seen my intro to dulcimer video, this is going to go more in depth on what to do with this thing when you first get it and how to start learning on it, okay? So that's what this video is for. I'm going to leave my other one up there so that you can go there and uh, watch that to learn about the parts and learn how to get it in tune and all that. Um, but for this video, you need a dulcimer. You need a pick. You need a drink. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna relax and have some fun. Now, this is something that I recommend. You don't have to have it, but I recommend it. If you have a phone or even anywhere where you're watching me on YouTube right now, you can pull up something on YouTube. It's free. Uh, you can, there are also apps for these things too, but it's a metronome, okay? So if I go into the search of my YouTube and type in 60 BPM metronome, I get all different sort of... Well, my internet's slow. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Okay. I get all sorts of these, right? Now this is pretty important at, when we begin, okay? We want to learn a sense of timing, okay? So this is important. If, you, if you'll do this with me, uh, I'm gonna show you examples of it on the video. I hope it's gonna pick up. I will be putting this closer to the microphone. Uh, but I suggest you pause this video, go get your dulcimer, because we're gonna play along, we're gonna play through these things. And we are going from your first week of the dulcimer. Um, so yeah, do that, and I'll see you here in a second. All right, so you have your dulcimer. Now, I need you to get in tune, if you didn't already from watching that other video. Get it in tune using D-A-D -D tuning. All right? So you're going to tune those three or four strings you have there to D, A, D. That middle one's an A. Alright? I'm going to check my tuning. If you do not already have a tuner, an electronic tuner like this one, this is a Snark uh, super tight all instrument tuner. Um, I have links for them below. They're under 15 bucks normally. Um, if you don't already have one of these, get you one, okay? These things are great. They, they have a little slot in the back side right here where when you kill the battery, you can just easily take it out and you may need a magnifying glass like I do. I'm getting to that age to show you the number on the battery. But the battery just pops out here. It's like a watch battery. Um, but it just pops out and then it slides back in. And um, these things are available at uh, Walmart. I've bought them from there before. But one important thing with these is make sure you always turn this off or you'll be draining your battery. But go ahead and get yourself in tune. And then when we'll begin, I'm going to uh, change the view here so you quit seeing this and you see the dulcimer, okay? Okay, so now we've got a good clear shot of the dulcimer fretboard here. Um... With our pick, any kind of pick will do. I have my preference, of course, like everyone else, but uh, with your pick in your strumming hand, we're gonna strum right around in this area here, okay? Uh, this is where we get our most pleasing tones. If you come back here to this strum hollow, You can get louder volume, but over here, 
It's warmer. Okay, so we want to hold our pick in our hand, right? And we want to be relaxed. We're not death gripping this pick. Uh, we want to be relaxed. Now, the picks that I like have a little grippy. You don't have to get this pick. There's lots of other picks. These are a little pricey, but um, lots of other ones with a little grippy thing in here. And I like that because I tend to hold them so lightly, they'll even spin around. <laughs> um, I'm just a very light uh, touch there. But you hold that between your uh, index and thumb, all right? And we want to make sure that we never want to strum perpendicular to the fretboard. Okay? We want to have an angle when we're strumming. See how perpendicular it's just a an unpleasing sound. And if we just tilt it out away from us when we're going when we're doing out strums. Okay, just practice that with me a few times. Take it and get it perpendicular and then tilt it away from you some. All right? And just with a light touch. Let's do 10 out strums together, okay? One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? Now, we're also going to do inward strums, okay? So instead of having it perpendicular again this time, we're not going to have it pointed away from us. We're going to have it pointed towards us, okay? Now, the amount that you point the top of the pick away or towards you, um, you just sort of have to play around with that. But let's try that, okay? Just try that a few times. All right, let's do 10 strums again. And let's do them slowly and I'll count you in. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now, another thing to talk about is our touch on our strings. You can pick very lightly. You can pick very forcefully. Now, when you pick a dulcimer, or when you strum a dulcimer forcefully, you get a lot of sounds. There's a long vibrating string length here, and these things are not meant to be played very aggressively. So you want to get in between there and get a pleasing tone out of it. Okay, now, we've done our out strums. And you may need to pause this video, go back, and just sort of get a feel for each, you know, the out strums and the in strums, okay? Now, this next part we're going to do is we're going to do out strums and in strums, okay? And we're just moving our hand like so here. We're just going back and forth just like this. So what we're going to do here is an out followed by an in. Now let's just do a couple of those, okay? One, two, ready, go. Out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. Notice how my hand, how my wrist is twisting there, okay? Now, the more you do this, the more comfortable it'll feel. You don't have to tw you don't have to twist your wrist this big exaggerated thing. I'm exaggerating it just a bit here for you so that you can see it well. But just practice that some. Now let's do our little exercise of 10 out in strums, okay? One, two, ready, go. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Again, you may need to pause it to go through some of these. 
Now, the fun part here is when we're going to get, <clears throat> excuse me, I have to take a little sip. The fun part here is when we're going to get this metronome going. Now, I'm going to start it off at 60 beats per minute. You, uh, I recommend you start it off at that as well. It's a nice, good, slow beat. And the more you do this, um, you can increase the number of beats per minute that you're doing, you know, 60, 62, 65, that sort of thing. And again, that's all free on YouTube for you to use. Um, you can also do that app thing I was talking about. Let me get this thing running here and then we'll talk. Okay. So for the purposes of this exercise, each tick, we have four beats that we concentrated on in music for our measure in standard 4-4 timing. Don't let that confuse you. Don't worry about it. I just said four beats, okay? So we have to count to four. That's all we have to count to uh, for the beginning part of this. So each tick is going to be one, okay? So if we listen to that, we hear one, two, three, four, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to do out strums to the ticking, okay? So I'll count you in and then we'll do some out strumming, okay? One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now let's do some in strums. Same thing. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three. Again, pause this video and do these. Work on these. Okay, now we're going to do that out in to the beat also. One, two, three, four. Okay? Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Now, practice this, okay? And that ticking, you're just building that ticking. One thing you can do if you'd like is set your foot to tap into the ticking. I like to do that. You can either do your heel or your toe. You want to build this internal clock, okay, that is steady and always on time. That's our goal here. Now, the sooner you'll start working with a metronome, the sooner you'll be able to play songs correctly, okay? And it'll just be ingrained in your memory. Oh, and pay no attention to my very old shirt here. Okay, now for the next exercise, what we're going to do, again, Go back, do each section of this. Do a few minutes of this until you get comfortable. Okay, now for our next drumming part. We're gonna get our ticker going again. Now, this time, on our ticks, we're gonna do this. So listen to the ticks and then I'll talk you through it. So I did three out strums and one in strum. So it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay? Let's do that a little bit. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Two, 
Okay. Pause that. Work through it a little bit. Get your own metronome going. All right, let's do another one. Uh, you could do one. So you could do it like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. With an out in. You can have this anywhere, okay? So just work with it in different spots until you're... Until you feel you're starting to comfortably strum. Now, let me stop this for one moment. One thing I like to do uh, in most of my playing is I will orient myself along this back side of the fretboard with several of my fingers lightly. And usually I just use that to start. Okay? Uh, but I don't have to look at that hand. If I start off right there, I'm ready to go. See that? All right. Now, let's do another one. This time, we're going to make it just a little... We'll, we'll go... This time, we're going to go a little bit longer. And we're going to do that out, out, in, out for our four. Two. Ready. Go. Now the purpose here is to get you used to several things, okay? It's obviously to get you used to strumming uh, out and in, but it's also to get you used to a pattern of some sort because patterns are great, okay? When you add a pattern to something you're doing over here, ooh, it just makes it sound so much better than just this. If we did all out strums, right? That was all out strums. Now listen to this. It just varies the sound of it a little bit when we do some back and forth. Now, this is where it's going to get just a smidge harder, okay? So if you want to keep working within this, stay along this first part of the video. We're going to do something where we add another note in here, okay? Now, when I said we had four notes that we're counting on our metronome, one, two, three, four. All right. So, in a measure of music in our time sequence, I don't want to confuse you again, but we have four whole notes. Like I said, we can add a whole bunch more notes. We're going to just add one more note, okay? So, if we've got four in there, if we're going to add one more note, we're going to add it in between each of these four notes. Okay, so that's going to give us four more notes. I can't reach my hand around there. But that's going to give us four more notes for a total of eight notes. So that makes it... Uh, okay, so we're going to add four more notes. I can't hardly reach my hand around there. But it's going to go uh, like this. And you can also practice your strumming with your hand muted. All right, so we've got our one, two, three, four. Now, if we're gonna add something in between the one and the two, and all the other ones as well, we have to, we can do something easy where we just say the word and, right? So it would sound like this, one and two, okay? They're an equal distance apart in time, in our timing, so it would be if we're counting it aloud and not playing, it would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so to put that down onto our dulcimer <clears throat> with I'm, when I'm muting, it would sound like this. And we're going to do our ands. Like I said, this will be a little tougher. Our ands are all going to go in strokes. 
our numbers are all going to go out strokes, all right? So it would be, you don't have to do this, just watch me. I'm trying to make you understand what this is. So it would be one and two and three and four and, okay? So let me play that unmuted for you. One and two and three and four and. If I did it slower, one and two and three and four and. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> so let's see if we can set this thing to ticking and do some of that. Isn't this fun, you guys? What am I gonna do? Slow this down to 50. I just slowed it down to 50. I chose another one. All right. So since we're doing this and, <clears throat> and we're now doing eight strums during the time we get four clicks, right? So <clears throat> here's what we're going to do. It's going to be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, Four. That's the way we were doing it. Now we're going to go our and, all right? One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. Now let's try strumming it. Okay. One, two, ready, go. something else um, so you may want to pause that and work on that work on these things the more you work on them the better you're gonna get so once you have that going on once you have that going on you can start to vary okay so we were doing one and two and okay what if we did one two and three Four and how would that sound? It would sound like this one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and okay, let's try that with a metronome. I've got it set at 60 beats per minute for this one. So if we're gonna do the one, two, and three, four, and how will it sound? Here we go. Let's do this one together. Here we go. Uh, all right, so I'm going to count you in. One, two, and three, four, and guys right 
now you can start to hear some music happening, right? <clears throat> All right, so we're going to get this left hand involved now. Woo! -hoo! We're going to play a song. We're going to play Mary Had a Little Lamb. Okay, now we're going to start out with all out strums, right, that we've been practicing. So our first notes are okay, now when I'm fretting on the fretboard, you want to fret close, you want to press your finger down close to the fret, not touching it, but close to it, and you want to hear clear notes, okay? Um, you could also do this with a noter. Okay, but we're, we're, I'm teaching fingers. So, um, one thing I like to do is I like to have what I call an anchor point. So I'll take my thumb and put it back here along the ridge of my instrument. Or sometimes you'll see me doing that. And you'll also see me doing it on the inside of my fretboard. Okay, so it's, it's a good little anchor point and helps me to know where I'm at and get leverage on my instrument. And again, you're not pressing down hard with any of this. It's just enough pressure to make it ring beautifully, okay? So, for our first notes, we're doing two. That's the second fret, one, two. So we're going two, one, oh, one, two, 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 okay? So we're going to do that together. Let me get my ticker going because we're going to do it in time at the 60 BPM level. All right. And I'll say one, two, ready, go. And remember, this is all out. Okay. One, two, ready, go. All right. Good job. You're learning music. Look at that. Okay, let's do it again. One, two, ready, go. All right. So we've got that first part. Practice that a little bit until you can do it comfortably. Now let's go on to the next part. So here's the next part. So the next part, for the next part, we're going to do, and what I like to do here now, okay, so we want to use all of our fingers. So um, we can start out, it's just a good distance between the second and first fret there on our first index finger and our ring finger. Um, that just sort of works out good. But as we move up and down, we want to use all of our fingers, okay? So use what's comfortable, but I like to call it economy of motion, where we use the finger. If we're coming over to here at this fourth fret, we don't want to be uh, down here using our index finger, unless we have to, of course, if we're playing a chord or something. But it's, it's, more, it's using more of that economy of motion if we were to use, say, our ring finger there, or even our pinky there, Look how close I am to being in the right spot for that quick change to the next note. So, the next part of this, the first part to remind you is this. Here's the next part. So, what we did there is we did three notes at the first fret. Notice I'm using my ring finger. One note here at the second fret. Two notes at the fourth fret. Okay, so let's do that again, and then we'll do it together. Now you'll see that time, instead of using that middle finger, I went straight to the index finger and I just sort of lifted my pressure up. When I moved it from this second fret to the fourth fret, I just lifted my pressure up and slid it along the string and then pressed it back down. I could also do what is called a slide there, where I keep the pressure down and just go in a slide. Look, you already learned an embellishment. Oh, isn't that great? Okay, so let's play that together. Here we go. One, two, 
Ready, go. Okay, now pause it, practice it. Let's play that whole part there, combining both of those two parts. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. playing music and you're almost done okay now for the next part we're start we're right here now we come back to the beginning and we do that same part again okay that was our first part of the song you already know it so we don't have to practice that now for the last part we go So let's do the whole thing together now. One, two, ready, go. You played your first song. Awesome. Okay, now let's get the ticker going. I'm going to let it go at 60 beats a minute again. And we'll try it there. And you may need to practice this a few times to get it right, okay? Don't worry about it. All right, I'm going to count you in. Let's get our ready position. One, two, ready, go. Some stuff here. Now one little note about this song, you're gonna hear pauses in the music, okay? And on the metronome that'll that'll be extra ticks that we don't play at. Now I want you to just listen to this. I'm not gonna talk you through all this. Just listen to how the song sounds and feel when you need to be playing again. Obviously you're not gonna go Now, I did that and it was in time, but pauses in our music sound really nice and natural. So when we go, I'm leaving one extra beat in there that I don't play anything on. Uh, you're gonna use this stuff a lot when you play. So I just want you to get familiar with that and start messing around with it. Um, there's so much more we can do here, but I sorta wanna stop there because I think this is a good, uh, this gives you a lot of stuff to work on. Uh, if you're a new player, uh, let me move this camera, hang on. Okay, I decided to stop the video there because I think for early beginners, this gives you plenty to work on, okay? There's a lot you can do within this video. Um, please do pull up a metronome and start working with it. That will really help you a lot. Um, now, I can do a whole series on this. Um, I don't know what I would call it, but I can do this if there's a need for it. So if you guys, enjoy it like it and want more you have to let me know i need some feedback so give me a thumbs up if you enjoy it and want to see more tell me down below um you know 
Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the new videos for the series. But um, I really need a name for this. Um, but if you've never touched an instrument before, you may need this. Or if you've maybe played piano and never touched a stringed instrument before, something like that. Uh, you may need more of this strumming help. And, uh, and most of all, I hope you're enjoying playing your new dulcimer. There is not much in this world that I love more than playing music. The joy that it brings me is beyond anything I can tell you about and describe to you. Um, the joy that it brings family and friends as well. You know, so um, grab that dulcimer and play it. Dust it off if you've got it somewhere hidden. Get it up there where people can see it and get it out and play it. Tell people about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, and before I go, uh, there's a couple things I need to tell you about. I need to talk to you for a minute about Patreon. Patreon is a place where you can um, help support what I'm doing with these music lessons. I do more than just the music lessons here. I also do some music ministry. And you see that at the end of my videos where I say Jesus loves you. But I'm also working on new projects and other things. You can hear about that stuff over at Patreon. But, and if you're interested in supporting that sort of a thing, you can do that at Patreon as well. So Patreon is a place where you can go to support creators like me who, uh, bring you lessons and things of that nature. That's what I do anyway. I bring you lessons in multiple instruments and if you really are getting something out of this and want to give back, that's a place for you to do that. Um, you can sign up through PayPal which is extremely secure and you know I've got all different levels of support there um, just for fun. Um, the lowest level I've got is two dollars a month so you know for the price of a candy bar a month or a cheap cup of coffee which I'd prefer um, you can help me out and support what I'm doing I also give you back things uh, at different levels I've got a bunch of levels like I said but I give you back little rewards and things of that nature as well at each level as a thank you as a small thank you um, but I really need to hear from you if you want to see more of these so make sure you hit that like button and you let me know, Mandy, okay, I got something out of this. Thank you. Please give me more. Something like that. That would be great. Um, because if there's not a need for this, then I won't do them. I'll do other things. Okay? But uh, I enjoy it. And I always, always want people to uh, find joy in playing. And those people who maybe have tried in the past and are afraid or not afraid really but they just didn't have success with it I don't know maybe they didn't click with whoever they were learning from maybe the book they had didn't you know didn't show it to them to where they understood it something like that um, but I just love doing it so there we go that's gonna end this video and before I go I always always have to remind you that Jesus loves you bye bye